um Bert Kreischer sat down recently with DJ or Vlad TV, right, to talk about Chris D'Elia. And it was pretty interesting, right? Let me see if I can find it. The, the, the... Bert said something about Chris D'Elia. And I... <sighs> I don't know. Let me see if I can find it on here. Should I find it? Let me see if I can get it. Bear with me one second. Buh, buh, buh. Where is it? Is it not here? Oh, it's hard to get a hold of it. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Let's move on that one. I don't even know. I don't even know if I can get it on this straight away. But there's a little clip where he basically spoke about him in a pretty unflattering way, as you can assume, judging by the tone of my voice and you know the fact that you know none of Chris Lee's friends have really come out and backed him in any meaningful way at all. Let me see if I can get it on here anyway. The new links on here. Let's move this a bit. Bear with me. Bear with me. Where is it? Hopefully, can, can I just play this without just without it taking me off copyright if I just play the audio and not have the video playing? Would that work? I don't think it will, innit? Because last time I, the video got blocked completely when I played it. I wonder why Vlad does that as well. He has interviews online on YouTube. Why do you have to kind of like block the video so it doesn't get played anywhere? That's annoying. Because I think I did it last time when I played a video of like um, Vlad interviewing. Uh, who was interviewing? He might have interviewed. I forgot who it was actually. Who was it? 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 It was it was a rapper. I think it might have been Favio Forum when he was talking about his age and stuttering. And I tried to play that clip, but he just completely blocked it worldwide. So I'm hoping this doesn't happen again. But let's just play a little bit of it here now. But talking to Vlad about the issue of Crystalia getting cancelled. Let's see if I can. I'll just play the audio, see if that works, and then if it doesn't, I'll change tact. Don't you worry about that. And, and, and so forth. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's recovered from that yet, or. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't talked to him. I haven't. You know, it's, it, once again, it comes from a weird place of like, of like, and this is because I'm married to my wife, and my wife is someone who will spin things so that I can understand them. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is, I don't know any of the details what happened and what didn't happen I know that it was, came out on Twitter and there seemed to be a lot of damning evidence but but nothing was, wasn't in the court of law and I don't know what the truth is all I know is my wife was like here's the, the only thing you gotta know is how would you feel if a 37 year old man was texting your daughter and that's immediately I was just like alright that's pretty fucked up like I don't text children at all <laughs> like like that doesn't ever come into my like I don't even text I don't but I don't hit up people so, so that's what Burkett should say. Hopefully you didn't my my thing didn't get cancelled and you didn't block um what you why you heard. But again, it's hard to get up it's hard to get frustrated at people who've consistently shown you their, you know, crappy individuals and crappy friends. But I think if I was Chris Lee, I'd be a little bit annoyed, right? That none of my friends have come out and backed me, especially when you consider the severity of the allegations in comparison to other people who have got way more support. Um just reading the cold hearted truth and facts of the matter, it does appear like Chris was a bit of a dog, right? He definitely had a partner at home who was pregnant at the time, if not giving birth. And he was making sure that he was hitting up any girl on his socials that were commenting, leaving double taps on him, like any any person, any kind of female that interacted with his social media in any kind of meaningful way. It looks like he tried to make an effort to talk to them personally, right? And then of course made sure to kind of delete his paper trial by converting them over to Snapchat, all this sort of like, you know, be kind of dirty dog sort of stuff especially if you've got a partner i guess if you're single it wouldn't really matter you'd be looked at as a creep but if you've got a partner at home doing what he was doing is obviously not good not correct um but for the most part it doesn't look like he was actively trying to hook up with underage girls he might have a preference for younger girls like most men do most men do like younger women right that's the kind of the general consensus that's not a crime 
but he did slip up on a couple of occasions where he might have messaged people who are underage. And then the one that I think really hurt him was the one where he clearly was told that the girl was underage. He backed away. And then as soon as he knew she turned um, of age and, you know, was whether it's 18 or whatever it was, he slid back in the DMs. That was a bit weird. Okay, cool. But there's no crime there being committed. If anything, he is obeying the law, which is kind of, you know, making sure that you're only hooking up with people of age. Now, then when you read the accounts of the girls actually involved, it sounds like he was absolutely a dick to these girls when they actually did meet them in person. And again, it's not excusing the fact that you're going to hook up with young girls outside of marriage or outside of your relationship with a baby on the way. But regardless, that's still scumbaggery. But in person, it sounded like he was a bit of a shit company, right? He was he didn't go out of his way to make the girls feel comfortable. If anything, he tried to, it seemed like maybe initiate trains with some of these other openers when they were doing shows and stuff. So really dog creepy stuff, but nothing that would I would say say hey he's a categorically a bad person he might be a bit of a shitbag to girls but in terms in general from what i've seen so far he's not and why i'd say that is because throughout his success and throughout his kind of time where he was jumping on podcasts or podcasts and you know giving these guys views and stuff no one really called him out on the stuff he was saying i didn't hear any whispers prior to that you know bomb of a revelation from that girl who's watching you what one day which is you know he's probably cursing the day he was ever on that show because that's what essentially uh started this whole flurry of accusations coming out but i didn't hear anything from the comedy community prior i might have heard some whispers on podcasts here and there about how many girls come out to go watch crystalia do stand up and stuff but it was pretty understandable considering he's the only guy who's kind of semi normally hands averagely handsome looking in the score of la stand-up community he was really pretty popular on vine which is populated by a lot of young people and he tends to have a style of comedy that might lend itself to younger crowds so it didn't make any it wasn't a surprise to me that he had a a bit of a um a female fan base out there but i never really heard anything untoward about him we didn't really hear that he was a bad guy behind the scenes if anything everyone loved him and then suddenly the accusations come out and no one has the decency to call him that's the first thing that really come to mind here vlad ox um bert kreischer about crystalia and he says i don't know i haven't spoken to him how can you not speak to a friend in the community that you someone that was a friend someone who if you read between the lines he was meant to be in Bert Kreischer's The Cabin. That's what that's what I think. Because he always says, oh, we have to change things. And he always stumbles his words. But you know Bert Kreischer, he, he's a glutton for dropping a name here and there. But it feels like to me, they filmed an episode of The Cabin with Chris Lee, but they had to delete it or change it or fill him in with somebody else. It might have been Chris Lee and Bobby Lee and they had to swap it with somebody else. Um, last minute.com, like a Donald Rose, or whatever it may be. So for someone like him, who it seems like they were some way cordial they somehow had some sort of relationship whether it was just professional whatever it was to not have given him the decency of a phone call for so he could explain his side of things he didn't do it but Kreischer I mean Brendan Schaub and Brian Callen didn't call Chris Aaliyah prior and uh, and ask for his side of the story they just turned on the camera just like blubbering and you know Brendan Schaub did the kind of iconic I can't talk I can't talk bullshit so none of his friends uh, you know maybe with the exception of Joe Rogan who's never going to say anything anyway it feels like Joe Rogan's got like a, a bit of a code of conduct he does whenever his friends are involved in public scandals he never comments on it right that's his basically his luxury for being for having fuck you money he could just afford not to talk about it and not bring it up and then when you're over it he'll bring it back on your show it feels like for the most part you've, you've seen that he's done that with Alex Jones maybe except for mine or maybe someone else i don't know if he's if he likes you he's kind of always going to give you a second chance but everyone else in the community for the most part in the la comedy scene has completely abandoned him when you think when you think about it you know his allegations are what being a bit of a creep and a douche and sliding into the dms unknowingly of somebody else underage and then getting back into the dms when she was of age that's at most what he's effectively done and everyone has essentially um excommunicated him from the scene now that could be just because he's less competition for everybody right it could just be a pure selfishness thing like hey he was crushing the comedy store every time you heard people talking about the comedy store the comedy store they would always really talk in glowing terms about how well chris Aaliyah did on stage right how he absolutely destroyed so it made sense it could make some level of sense why they would be quick to kind of bury him and distance themselves from chris Aaliyah so that they could afford opportunity to maybe get a spot on the lineup but again how proud would you be that you kind of got your spot on the comedy lineup just because you failed to stand up for somebody you stand up stand up for a friend who's going through a tough situation and again no one's saying you condone his behavior no one's saying that but so far apart from fear of Vaughan, and maybe to some extent tom segura and, and christina Pajinski when they spoke about it to some extent 
no one's really come out and just said hey what he's done allegedly i think is horrible but he's my friend and i'm gonna be there for him as in any way possible that i can because that's what friends do no one's even said that just that no one said that everyone essentially has tried to make it seem as if what he's done is cancelable and just refuse to speak speak about it or speak positive about it in any way shape or form look at Whitney cummins who's meant to be his best friend in hollywood you know deleting his episode on a podcast this is himself completely from him burying him in any chance that she gets available going through this what midlife crisis she's going through at the moment where she's kind of painting her hair like a mermaid like come on man these guys are horrible and again maybe it's a good thing i think if you're crystalia maybe it's a good thing that you get to see everybody as they are in the light um no one can kind of hide behind uh a tweet or something everyone can speak at the time in real time it's all recorded it's all documented so you get to see how people actually are especially if you're at his level of success and credibility and blah blah, blah. like for, for to have people not go out of their way because that, that's what i don't know maybe it's a symptom of hollywood it just is what it is isn't it like it's dog eat dog in it because if somebody as famous as him could get completely ditched everyone should be on notice right as i say in history hyenas you're on notice everyone should be on notice everyone should be on notice that hey if i get in any kind of scandal i'm on my own i think some la i think most of the la guys it feels like the new york comedians because they're you know effectively ignored by the majority of the it's with except of with the exception of some of the legion of skanks guys but mostly they're kind of ignored and tolerated but i guess for the la comedians out there you have to be under the assumption that if you do get cancelled, you are on your own. You have nobody. No one's going to help you. No one's going to come to your aid. So that probably is the reason why a lot of these guys are like, you know what? I'm not getting involved, mate. I'm not getting involved because if I do get involved and I get somehow attached to this story in an in an in an inadvertent way, I, I, there's too much online. If, if you're Bert Kreischer, like you have kids who are maybe not teenagers. Yeah, teenagers now at the moment. I think so, right? Um going to college soon you have a new house you're paying for you know maybe housing adjustments you're building a man cave i don't know whatever you're doing with your money you have a lot of bills you can't afford to risk your career for a guy who essentially got himself in trouble really in it because for all the, for everything i'm saying about his friends being shitty chris Lear only has himself to blame if he would just would have played home a bit better and not try to kind of smash as much uh you know poon as he wanted to on the road he would have been fine but maybe his addiction to, you know, um, enjoying him, indulging himself in the trappings of tour life, maybe kind of got the best of him. And it also, I think, served for the it served the best. It, I think it probably helped the comedy scene, or it helped a lot of the wives and mothers at home <laughs> for of the LA comedians a lot in the long run, in the bigger picture. I think there's a lot more. There's probably there were probably other comedians out there who probably did as much or if not worse than Crystal Lee on the road who probably got put off by the negative reaction that he got from getting caught out in people's DMs and they probably kind of hung up their player um their player sort of hat or you know shoes that they put on when they go out and creep on the night after their shows on tour so it might it might have actually helped the scene in general in terms of kind of keeping households together uh rescuing marriages and families and all that sort of stuff so maybe he's a sacrificial lamb and it's kind of the best thing that happened but again it would be good to make see him make a comeback i think especially if you kind of compare the level of severity of allegations compared to you shouldn't do this but you know imagine a Chris Lee and brian callan you know one person's been accused of raping somebody do you know what i mean like the, that that's an insane accusation to come out with so and if a guy is just you know being a little bit too horny in the dms that's one thing but raping somebody is a whole nother thing so if anyone deserves a second chance it's definitely Chris Lee. um but hey, whether or not that happens, especially in this sort of society we're living at the moment, I'm not too sure, man. I'm not too sure.